All right, welcome back. Uh, Gary, that's up to you, buddy. Name, yeah. name that tune. Oh, I'm not a music person. I'm sorry. Okay, and Catherine? I can, I know the words, but I couldn't tell you who did it. All right, you can, <laughs> you can sing a little bit. Uh, that's all right, I'll pass. <laughs> and, uh, that was what Doug was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say John Fogarty. I, you took my answer. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dan. That is another home run song. So uh, before the break, we were just we were really digging into uh, fees and understanding fees and knowing what they are. And uh, hopefully, some of you have uh, pulled out uh, one, one of your IRA or four hundred one k statements and are now frantically reviewing it, trying to figure out what the fee structure is. <laughs> they probably still can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was Fine print. yeah? What I loved was um, that example you were talking about earlier, Doug. If a worker contributes five thousand a year for forty years and makes seven percent, which in and of itself is actually pretty ambitious for forty years when you look at it, because because yep. the average is actually closer to five. Um, if your annual fee is 05 percent, you're looking at a total nest egg of almost nine hundred thousand dollars. If your annual fee is three percent, you're looking at four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. And a lot of people, you know, I've, I've heard financial planners say, you know, it's only a 3% structure. And it's like, no, it's actually 3% plus other fees, plus commissions, whether you make money or lose money. Um, I love to point out that, you know, I own a property management company here in Indianapolis, Alpine Property Management. We manage over 700 single-family properties right now. And uh, we, we charge 10% of the collected rent. So if we don't collect rent... We don't charge you anything. You know, we're getting paid on performance. And I haven't heard a lot of 401k, stock-based, mutual fund-based, IRA managers touting that same kind of uh, promise because they want to get paid whether it's coming or going. Yeah. Um, now, now, Gary, uh, we, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about um, for those investors who are interested in self-directing their IRA, there's companies like Equity Trust right. that are a third-party trust provider. And what a lot of investors need to understand is, is the way that it works is let's say you have an IRA from an old job and it's sitting in an, uh, an account at, like, say, a Merrill Lynch. What you do is you go to a company like Equity Trust, you roll over those funds. It's not a withdrawal. It's not a penalty. It's not a loan. You roll those over into Equity Trust's account, mm -hmm. and then you direct where that money goes. That's exactly right, and that's that's why they call it a self-directed IRA. And um, you can also do the same thing with a 401k. If you've been laid off or you're changing jobs, you just don't want that 401k sitting at, at your former employer. You can also roll that into a self-directed IRA also. And Doug, what kind of inter what kind of returns are investors who buy rental property in in the metro making? You know, that's a that's a great question and I was actually just thinking about the fact that, say that somebody is, in this previous article that we were just talking about, say they're getting 5 or 7% return. Think about the, the fact that, you know, after you factor in inflation and then after you factor in taxes, once they start withdrawing them from their 401k, obviously that's a tax-deferred uh, growth vehicle, but um, you're probably not even really making any money at, at that rate of a return. <laughs> and then, you know, Aaron, you and I, when we work with investors and provide them with turnkey solutions, we make sure they're making right around a 9 to 10% return mm -hmm. on their money. That's after, like Aaron said, that's after taxes, insurance, property management, vacancy, maintenance, the whole thing. We try to keep them right around 9 to 10%. So they're actually making money. Not We're not even just talking about long-term home price appreciation. We're just talking about rental income. They're making 9 to 10%. They're actually making money as opposed to some of these other things that, that functionally you're not actually getting ahead. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always interesting to me when, when people psychologically don't separate out passive returns and active returns. So my brother's a really bright guy, and... He, Wait, Brant? <laughs> not that one, one oh, of my okay. other brothers. Oh, yeah. okay. Just kidding, Brant. I'm Brant's, kidding, buddy. Brant's not bright either. <laughs> I, have a brother that's, I have a brother that was a practically perfect SAT score guy okay i think he only missed two questions what but, was his name though what's that one was his name walter mitty no. so <laughs> right so uh he in his mind he can never separate out how amazing it is to make 10 percent passive while having a property manager collect that rent because in his mind everything should be an active return so when he 
runs his business, he regularly will make 80 to 200% a year on his business capital. So he has the expectation that his passive income should be making that. And um, for those of you who remember Bernie Madoff, what rate was Bernie Madoff paying his clients? Do you remember, Catherine? It was ridiculous. I mean, it was... I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've since I've well, kept up, but it was, some of it was twenty percent. I mean, well, it, it was ridiculous. It was, it was ridiculous for securities, but Doug. Yeah, it was actually on the investments that he wasn't making. He was paying ten percent return. Paying ten percent. Okay. Yeah, it was ten percent. So. Yeah, he was paying ten percent, and he couldn't make that with stocks and the market because of the amount of money that he had. And he raised how many billions, telling people he was making 10% returns. Yeah, and that's laughable to us because, you know, over the last month, Doug and I have been getting just swamped with groups, private equity groups yeah. and REITs that are buying Indy Metro properties just to hold them because, folks, if you don't think 10% is a great return, then get out your IRA and show me over the last 10 years where you've made more than about 5%. I don't believe you. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier about ignorance. You're just ignorant to what a good return is because you've never paid attention. And whether it's how much somebody's tax rate is or how much what your fee structure is on your current retirement funds or what a comparable good return is, um, <clears throat> we as investors are the only people who are, who are going to be responsible for what our retirement looks like. Catherine. I think one thing to remember too, and many in real estate investors are aware of this, but many, especially local people, may not be aware. A lot of my clients are out-of-state clients. I've never met them face-to-face, -face, but they have decided to, ch to invest in the Indianapolis area because they've done their homework. And one of the things that they have discovered, aside from the fact that we have a very stable, uh, we don't have an up-and-down housing market, and we have a fairly stable population, and, and a fairly friendly regulatory uh, infrastructure, is that Indianapolis right now is the hottest real estate market in the country for rental properties. Rents are going through the roof. Yep. And if you, if, you, if, you are, if you are a property owner and you are not looking at increasing your rents, then you are probably not maximizing your profits. And I'm not certainly one for gouging. I don't think that's a good big business practice. But I do know that um, it is really... There, for every person who has, for, you know, for every cloud, there's a silver lining, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for every person who has had to, who has lost their home, either through foreclosure or losing their job, they have to still find some place to live. And for every home True. that has been foreclosed upon or that has been moved out on, there are people who are who need to move into those homes. So with the Indianapolis housing market and rental market being what it is, it does not make sense to not take advantage of it at this point in time. Yeah, that's true. And Gary, you have a point. There. Yeah, just, you know, when we're when we're talking about here, um, how do you get this data? What does this data mean? And, and things like that. Something that you said earlier, Aaron, is what is it that the rich know that middle class families don't teach their children? And to be very honest, you know, Robert Kiyosaki talks about this in some of his books, and it's getting a financial education. Mm -hmm. and, and what does it mean to get a financial education? And it's, it's more than just learning how to balance a checkbook. It's more than just learning how to read a financial or a, um, a bank statement. Um, you know, when I, uh, being in the capacity that I am as president of Syria, when I'm talking with a lot of beginning investors or they, or they have this idea of wanting to get out on their own and they want to learn how do I become an investor or how do I invest money, uh, I give them three simple rules to start off with. You know, first, you know, what are your financial needs? Because if you don't know how to analyze your financial needs, how do you know if 5% is a good return versus a 10%. Exactly. Um, you know, what is your risk tolerance? You know, maybe at the point at where you're at of your age is going to determine um, what kind of things uh, you might invest in. And here we're talking about rental properties. You know, if you're young and you're aggressive, you might want to do something in, in a border zone, war zone area, as opposed to something that's in a um, bread and butter neighborhood. So the whole risk reward uh, thing. And then 
just going back again, what is your financial education? Because without that knowledge, not knowing how to analyze your situation, not knowing how to read articles like what we've been talking about here today, you're not going to know how to process that to bring it into what I call then making your financial rules. Because in your financial rules are not something that is set in stone. Your financial rules will change over time based on your needs changing and based on your experience and knowledge that you gain over time also. Yeah, um, and I think, Gary, that's what, what you just said. It really epitomizes what Cyria is about and the goal of working with a nonprofit. You know, for $160 a year, you can be part of a group of several hundred investors here in central Indiana that are passionate about real estate investing, that uh, have different interests within the industry. There's vendors that you can meet with and network with. You can get involved with Cyria by going to their website, which is www.cyria.org. Uh, Catherine, you're at the monthly meetings, correct? I am. Uh, Gary, of course, as, in your capacity as president, you're there, and do you both teach different breakout type sessions, correct? Uh, uh, yes, actually, I've had an opportunity. Just um, our last meeting, we had a fantastic um, attorneys panel. It was an opportunity for members to ask questions to a group of four attorneys. Two of us were um, litigation landlord tenant oriented and two of us were more transaction oriented. They did real estate transactions and it was really a very informative, um, I thought it was it was a really informative meeting and, and we're able to ask a lot of questions because there are many, many, many legal aspects to being a real estate investor. I also did a training on the ins and outs of um, eviction, you know, what happens when you have to go through the eviction process, what you do, what you don't do. Yep. So, um, and, and basically what Doug and I do is then we translate the, the Cyria education, pure education and networking platform into a full services platform and offer turnkey properties and, turn, and investing opportunities in property. To get more information about what we do, you can go to invest317.com. You can call us at 866-612-0346. Or you can continue to listen every Saturday morning at 11 as we move forward with our mission to bring you tips and tricks about real estate and about investing in this market. My name is Aaron Adams. Thank you for listening to us today here on News Talk 1430 WXNT. And hopefully we'll hear, hear you next week.